Hi, this is Daniel Shanahan with New Leaf Data, and this is part two of vertical navigation using FileMaker's new layout object popovers. Uh, let's close that down. Let's see, I have a couple of things. Uh, the first thing to notice is that I'm setting a global variable with a return to limited list. So uh, the first thing I do is I set that, and I do that on the on the open script. And so this is the native open script that comes with the solution. And then I've just added this this other script. So I'm setting the field name, and you can see the scripts that I've added are below this line. So we'll take a look at that again. This comes this is called by the open script, and it's pretty simple. It sets a variable, sets a global variable with this list. So right away, when the solution is open, I start with a return delimited list of the three main tables I want to see, three main layouts. I use that list in a virtual list. And so I have this, this table here. Uh, I only have I only have two extra tables, an icon table and a navigation table. So here's the icon table or the navigation table, and I you know, I really don't need the ID, but I have it on there. It's force I have it, I suppose. Here's the field number, and then the field name, and of course in a virtual list we you get the value of the variable, the global variable with the field number, and that's how that gets populated. Let me hold off on the icons for a minute and just show that, uh, show the icons. And the icon table is pretty simple. It's a, uh, didn't mean to do that. This is a, it's one field. It's a global field of icons. It's a repeating field and it's container. That's containers. And this is what it holds right here. And I get the icons from this site. These are these are, this particular this particular set is free, and um, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. I don't know if this is Web Alice or how to pronounce that, but I I use these icons and I like them quite a bit. So I have those in containers. Now when I go back to the to the re, to the uh, this field on this level one navigation, let's take a look at that as a layout object. Here's my portal, and uh, here's the field that ha that contains the uh, the data from the global variable field name, and then I have a level one icon and a level two icon. A little hard to see, but I just have those two right next to each other. There's a button in the way, uh, so uh, I'm gonna keep that there for the moment. But here you can see this is the level one icon here, and then when I click that, this is the level two icon. So here's how those are created: is uh, oops, get down to navigation on this level one icon. I simply say in the field name if uh, the field name up here in the table if that equals customers, then it's the first whatever's in that first repeat. Uh, repeating field uh, container, and the same for the second, and same for the third for invoices and products. And then when I go to level two, I say show, add, and find, and those are four, five, and six. So again, that corresponds to where's my window? Uh, so I just do a calculation that says if if the field name. Uh, and I'm not showing it here, but I can. I can say if field name equals customer, go grab this icon. If it equals invoices, grab this icon. And if it grabs product, if it's products, grab this icon. And I go on down with that. Uh, so that's how that gets set. And let's see. Then the other thing to show is that since this is portal based it's going to need a couple of different table occurrences and a couple of different relationships. So I have those here. I uh, made those in blue. The icon uh, 
table occurrence needs to be on there, but it doesn't need to be related to anything. And then these navigations, uh, I have these as a Cartesian join, and there are different ways to do Cartesians. I'm using this one. You can certainly use the equals with a constant one or something like that. And uh, but in any case, any any layout based on a table occurrence that you want to have uh, that that navigation, you need to connect this. And so I don't have it on invoices. If I wanted that on invoices, I would need to grab that and put that here. If I wanted it on orders, same thing here, data. Uh, so I just did a real quick thing here, but you get the idea on that. Okay, so that's the, uh, those are the tables. The light, Let's see, we looked at the tables, is that right? We looked at these two tables, and we looked at the fields. Those calculations. We looked at the relationship graph. We looked at the layouts and what's in those. And then the only other thing to look at, I think, is the script. Uh, so we'll look at the script and the parameter. And we've looked at this one already. This is set at the opening again, and it's very simple. Very simply sets the global variable. So in a it really gives us a default. And now let's take a look at navigation. So uh, let's see, before I do that, let's look at the at, um, at the script. We're going to look at this. Again, I have this list, and in the list, I'm, I'm indenting these with a tab. And so what I want to do, when I do this click, you, know, you can imagine if I'm doing it here in my data viewer. If I click on customers, the behavior I want is, I want to say, hey, it's already expanded. What I want to do is contract it. If I click on products, I want to say, is it expanded or contracted? If it's if it's contracted, I want to expand it. So, and then I want to do something if I'm in show all, add, or find. So what I, the way that I did this, and of course there's many ways to do that, but the way that I did this is I said, let me find that first tab character that's right here. And that will tell me if this is expanded or contracted. And so that enables me to do this, to toggle this. Uh, but I don't only get to toggle it, I can bounce that up. And so let's take a look at, at how that happens. Uh, again, there's a button here, and that button calls that navigation script. You can look at that shortly. But here's the uh, navigation calls that, and I go through here. So. So character nine, this is the tab, and I'm I'm setting a position. I want to find the position of the character nine. I want to know the position of the whole list or the length of the whole list, and then expanded on is going to tell me when I'm doing a replace, and so I replace the position of the tab with the length. So let's say the Let's say the length is 100 and the position is at 75. Then uh, that, will get, that will return, that will replace that with 25. It will tell me also that it's expanded. And uh, uh, let's see, the other thing to, to note is that when I move this around, I have to adjust this for the table occurrence. And, uh, and then this is what I'm passing. I'm passing these two things to the, the script. And then in the script, I grab those two things. Here's the first one and here's the second one. And it will tell me if it's expanded or if it's not. It tells me what was selected. It tells me if it's expanded or not. And um, 
uh, I won't go through the whole thing because this is getting a little bit long but I, basically what I want to do is I want to say if if it's if it's um, a show at or find those are going to navigate to a different layout and uh, otherwise I want to find out if it's expanded or not and if it is I want to contract it and if it's not expanded then I want to uh, if it is contracted then I want to expand it again the file is available on my website you'll be able to go in here and tear it apart reverse engineer add uh, modify it make it better and uh, so there you have it that's a way of doing vertical navigation uh, in a uh, using using the um, popovers.